Hello, everyone, and welcome to Wellness Wednesday with 3W. My name is Beth Chase, and I am your host for today's broadcast. Well, today is our third broadcast where we will be talking about breastfeeding. Remember, we had three episodes. In the first episode, we had Melody here who shared about her challenging experience breastfeeding. And last week, there was an episode discussing the joys of breastfeeding with another woman mother who had got to have a very positive experience. Now, this week, we will be talking about the medical benefits with, to breastfeeding for the women with Dr. Sue Rutherford, who is the president and medical director of 3W. Now, remember, 3W is an accredited medical clinic with the National Association for Ambulatory Healthcare. And 3W provides free reproductive health screening and consult services for women in the Seattle area. So welcome back, Sue. Let's talk breastfeeding. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so actually, I'm going to put in a plug. The hospital that I worked at for many years was the first, and it's just here in Kirkland, Washington, was the first hospital in this country to be accredited through or get the, the Baby Friendly Award from UNICEF. Interesting. Yeah, first one in the country. But that reflects also this this area. There are a lot of other hospitals that have also come along on that same path. And there was a culture in the general area which supported that being a, a, a very strong position to take, which mm-hmm. is promoting breastfeeding. Interesting. So they're kind of one of the leaders Yes. In many yeah. ways. Yes. Ah, oh, that is yeah. so interesting. Right here in our greater Seattle area. What a, what a great heritage. <laughs> yes. So anyway, many people consider promotion of breastfeeding to be a public health issue because of the benefits. Now, I know uh, that you talked with Melanie, who had some real struggles, and it certainly isn't going to work for everybody, but the Healthy People 2020 goals want 85 or more percent of women to be following the breastfeeding recommendations. And actually, our country is getting pretty close to, to that, although there are some challenges. So what are the benefits? First of all, for the women, there is a decrease in the incidence of breast cancer, ovarian cancer, less diabetes, hypertension, and heart disease, and again, at later in life. So those are benefits. Now, these you're not going to see big statistical numbers. So if somebody was unable to breastfeed, then it's not like their percentages go way up. But still, there are measurable benefits. For the baby, there are fewer infectious diseases. There's less SIDS, sudden infant death syndrome, and fewer problems with metabolic diseases. So it benefits both mother and mother and baby. The breast milk is easier to digest than the formula, although the formula companies work very hard and compete with each other to try and make things that are as close to breast milk as they can, but still breast milk is easier to digest. And it contains antibodies that protect against infections, allergies in the baby, inflammatory bowel disease, and I mentioned SIDS. So for babies who have been breastfed, those benefits actually are seen to extend into adulthood. They have lower rates of obesity and cardiovascular risk factors, diabetes, and some cancers. So anyway, so breastfeeding has overall measurable positive benefits. Mm -hmm. So in your experience of over 35 years, right, Mm -hmm. as an OB, GYN, Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of recommendation would you give to your pregnant women who would come and see you, even here at 3W, who we see? What's your recommendation? Yeah, sometimes even at the beginning of pregnancy, you want to plant the seed for for breastfeeding, for them thinking of planning to breastfeed. And that should be encouraged throughout pregnancy. I don't know if there are any specific preparations that people have to do. They talk about nipple preparation and everything. I'm not convinced that that sort of process is necessary, but certainly learning about it and lining up your resources the first one is people saying, hey, you are going to breastfeed, aren't you? Um, <laughs> or you are going to try to breastfeed, aren't uh-huh. you? And continuing to make that possible. The critical time, of course, is right around delivery. And it's not at all uncommon for the first day or two to have feedings that are difficult. You know, things don't work right. Both mother and baby have to learn what they're doing. And sometimes, especially if a birth has been difficult, the baby may not be quite as their muscles may not be working quite as well. They may not be as awake. 
that sort of thing. Mothers can be a little sleepy too, especially if they've had, say, C-sections and they're on some pain meds because it is work to, to get the breastfeeding going. We have a couple of real blessings in this area. One is there has been widespread support and insurance coverage for electric breast pumps. Those things radically changed the ability of many women to breastfeed because sometimes it's just a matter of getting the milk flow going and the baby isn't necessarily perfect at getting that started as quickly. And so you add the electric breast pump. I would suggest everybody, you know, I mean, obviously a mother who's had kids before and this is no big deal, fine, go ahead and just do the breastfeeding. But first time moms, you know, I would say, boy, get that electric breast pump. I told all my patients to do that. Start with the electric breast pump supplementing when you feed. You feed the baby first, and then after the baby seems to not want any more, then pump. And my niece was interesting. She was told by somebody <laughs> at this wonderful hospital that was supposedly baby-friendly by a newer lactation consultant that, well, maybe it, it would, wasn't going to work that well for her. And I, I heard about it. I didn't let her know at that time how upset I was to hear that she'd been told that Mm -hmm. and, you know, went straight, of course, to the people I knew and said, hey, wait a second, you know, Uh (laughs) and I I told her, I said, you know, you just keep going at it and add that electric breast pump. It'll work out. You know, I just was positive. She ended up making so much milk, she became a milk donor. (laughs) (laughs) And we had a freezer full. She lived, she and her husband and their new baby Uh lived with me and was like, I got a freezer full of breast milk. (laughs) So anyway, oh, and I was I, I got to deliver some uh-huh. of those boxes down to the uh, uh-huh. down to the uh, site that would accept them. Oh, and, uh, goodness! You know. I wish I had that when I was breastfeeding my four babies. Oh, go forty years ago because it was a lot of work. It is a lot, you of know, work. to to get that, that breast going. milk out because mm-hmm. you always want yeah. to have that extra in yeah. case you have to go someplace or That's you know right. something. But oh, that sounds let the dad take wonderful. a feeding turn. <laughs> With the, with the breast milk, yeah. It yes. works so uh-huh. well to pump yes. extra, have it stored. Uh-huh. Uh, as a school teacher, she was pumping when she went back to school, uh-huh. you know, and, you know, would just lock her door, her schoolroom door, and, mm-hmm. and at lunch, and that was her lunch, was yes. pumping. <laughs> oh, I could have Oh, and yes. So, uh, yes. But I, it works so uh-huh. well because then uh, that was the milk that the baby got fed when she was at school and, and wasn't with the baby. And yes. so that, that worked out really well. Speaking of donor milk, Mm -hmm. because this region is so strong for situations where babies are particularly vulnerable, especially premature babies, babies, and the moms may not be able to make that much pumped milk in the very beginning, they can start feeding those preemies with donated breast milk so they get the real thing. And, and that's really, yeah, that is that's really helpful. Yes. Yeah. You know, I remember my mother, she was born in 1923, uh-huh. and she was telling me that with her mom, who had many babies in those early 1900s, that on, in, she said in almost every neighborhood, there was one nurse, a nursing mom, uh-huh. and she was the, the nursing mom of the block uh-huh. that would actually come in and nurse the babies in between things. So it's rather than pumping it and putting oh, really? this in a bottle and such and putting oh. it in the freezer, because you know, they really didn't have a freezers back then. Yeah. You know, they had the, the ice chest and uh-huh. such. But yeah, she said that every block just seemed, you know, there was one woman that was always seemed to the be wet the wet nurse. The wet nurse. That's like the Moses's word. Moses's mother. Yes. <laughs> Right. Well, we didn't have freezers and refrigerators. So isn't that interesting that actually I got to say that one thing I think that does bring women together Mm -hmm. is the breastfeeding experience. Yes. Would you agree? Yes. I think it does. Mm -hmm. Sharing stories. Yes. Oh, yeah. And supporting each other. Supporting each other. Working out Mm -hmm. or not. Uh, Our tricks. You know, oh, yes. some, some practical mm-hmm. things uh, like that, I I learn more from patients than yes. I do from any ed- formal education. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. And you probably recommended people go to the Lalechi League, I think that was the name yeah, of it. Yeah, that's a good support group. Great, great mm-hmm. support group. I remember when I first was breastfeeding, I called one of them at two o'clock yeah. in the morning because I was just, yeah. a, I was in tears. Yes. I couldn't figure yes. it out. I was yes. a new mom. Well, so. I'll tell you, I took care of a lot of pregnant diabetics, especially mm. gestational diabetics. And a lot of times they have trouble with weight. 
breastfeeding can really help you drop those pounds. Really? Yes. Really. You really slim down. And so, oh. I mean, if you if you can pump and mm-hmm. get extra milk out and just do it lots, it's mm-hmm. going to help you drop the weight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, yeah. I really encourage that. Could we talk about something I experienced with my fourth baby? And Melanie mentioned that she had encountered several of these where she actually had an infection in her breast. Yes. Could we talk about that for a minute as far as how to avoid it, what are the symptoms of it, and what they should do if they feel like they have it? Well, I don't know if I'm the best one to say how to avoid it. It just happens. We definitely put uh, women on antibiotics, on Mm -hmm. uh, pills, you know, systemic antibiotics, and say, well, won't that get into the breast milk? Sure, but the baby has those bacteria that are coming right through anyway. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's the treatment of Mm -hmm. that. You do keep feeding. uh As far as preventing, I think keeping uh, frequent feeding, Mm -hmm. you know, keeping uh, keeping your skin and everything clean is very helpful. But um, uh, going ahead and continuing to pump and empty a lot Mm -hmm. because if the infection, when you actually get enough of an infection to get up in the milk ducts and the glands, you need to be emptying that out flushing it out by producing more milk. Mm -hmm. So you keep feeding, you keep pumping, you just go crazy with that as much as you can tolerate. The worst thing to do is to to try and stop. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's the main thing is you keep that milk going to flush it out, maybe go on antibiotics. You know, Mm -hmm. we're very quick to put people on antibiotics if they have a breast infection. You don't want things to get plugged up and actually get an abscess. Then you're looking at you know, having some surgical drainage and stuff like that. That's not fun. Mm-hmm. So you want to get rid of that yes. infection as quickly so as possible. So what, what are the early symptoms of a, an infection? Well, uh, I'd, if there's pain, of course, mm-hmm. but usually redness. Mm. Uh, redness initially around the, the nipple area, but uh, extending to more of the skin of the breast is, is the most obvious. Sometimes they'll get hard because they're engorged. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you can just have tenderness and engorgement, and that'll cause pain. That doesn't need antibiotics. It needs to, you need to empty the breasts. Mm-hmm. That's when people want to stop breastfeeding for some reasons, maybe medical or maybe they're just ready to stop, then the breasts are thinking they're supposed to make milk, so they keep producing it, but it sits in there, it doesn't get emptied, and your breasts get pretty tender and hurt, and it hurts to walk maybe, it hurts to move them. You know, they're best off if you bind them kind of tightly to reduce that jiggling around so that it so that it doesn't hurt. But what happens then is when those little ducts and uh, glands get filled with milk, that pressure, like filling a tire with air or something, stretches. Okay, so that pressure exerts itself against the walls of the milk glands, and that causes those milk producing cells to flatten out and quit working. So eventually you stop producing milk because of that uh-huh. excess pressure, uh-huh. but you have to go through that period of engorgement, uh-huh. which, isn't, uh-huh. which isn't fun. Yes. Melanie and I both kind of talked a little bit about this because, you know, she had experienced multiple. I had mm-hmm. one with my last baby, and but we both had the same symptom early on. We were feeling fine one moment, mm-hmm. and within a couple minutes, suddenly we were just, we felt terrible. Like well, that, you know, that's true. You do feel, you feel like fast. you're sick. Yes. You feel yes. like you're like sick. You may a have train. a headache. You've got a fever. Uh-huh. You've got, you're just exhausted. Yes. 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 It was yeah. shocking. Like For, a flu almost. Yes. Only, you know, flu kind of can come on subtly, you know, a little right. bit, maybe over um, an hour right. or something. Yeah. And this but with this, quickly. both she and I, I said, I just remember sitting there at the kitchen table and suddenly I go, oh my gosh, I am so sick and I'm burning up. And, you know, yeah. so for me, it was very dramatic. But then maybe there were, you know, I had three children, smaller uh-huh. children than the fourth one. Got so distracted. perhaps, yes. So your attention <laughs> is not on your early symptoms. Yes. That could very well have been the case. But I think that's an important thing for our listening audience to hear out there from a doctor saying, these are things to watch for. If you're breastfeeding, yeah. you have these symptoms, don't ignore them. Yes. Pay attention to them. Yes. And what would true. be the first step? Call the doctor? Well, I'd try make sure you're feeding and pumping. Okay, you know that you're that you're actually producing milk and and keep that flow going. Make sure that and then and then call. Yeah, mm-hmm. then call the doctor. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of times we can answer questions over the phone. Mm-hmm. So that you know, that hopefully that's all it needs. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times you'll hear from the doctors. You know what? I'm really not sure. Why don't you call the lactation support people? Mm-hmm. And I think most hospitals do have. A 24-hour line now for people that are really struggling. If they don't, 
then at least certainly during the daytime, you can actually talk to somebody who's an expert in lactation. So helpful. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. Is it Because people do need support, but mm-hmm. very few people can do the breastfeeding without getting advice and encouragement and having questions and everybody has something come mm-hmm. up mm-hmm. Um, about the breastfeeding mm-hmm. when they're um, oh especially they the first time yeah. around mm-hmm. you just don't know what you don't know and that's kind of freaks you out the most yeah. yeah does it make any difference whether you have a the, the type of birth that you have so women who have c-sections the incidence of breastfeeding is a little bit lower but that's probably simply because they're tired it's work, et cetera. It's not because it's not as good. It's just as good. And I mean, the the best thing is for babies to start feeding or trying to feed within an hour of birth. Mm-hmm. It helps the babies. They're awake. Yes. Initially, uh-huh. uh, you know, a couple hours later, they're pretty sleepy. But if you can do it right away, in fact, a lot of hospitals have gone to uh, going ahead and skin to skin and breastfeeding before you even weigh the baby. Mm-hmm. Don't bother to weigh the baby until maybe an hour later or something like that. And definitely no baths early. You know, just go straight to that breastfeeding and skin to skin with the mother. Um, babies that are, say, that are in a special care nursery, you know, mm-hmm. that have some challenges, they even bring the moms in there or dads too. You, they, the babies can go skin to skin with dads and they can actually, you know, and women that have had mastectomies, can do the same thing that you use a little tube and a syringe that will empty as the babies suck. And that little oh. tiny tube is, is, is basically you kind of tape it to the nipple uh-huh. and the baby's working on whatever <laughs> you've got there. If you have a mastectomy uh-huh. and some reconstruction uh-huh. or something, you know, uh-huh. you have no glands, but the baby thinks they're feeding and the, uh-huh. and the food comes through the little tube. Interesting. Yeah. And they can have some of that same experience. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. interesting so, what we can do these days. Yes, yes. To fulfill that. So huh. the skin to skin really is good for the baby. It, it helps Why a lot. Why is that? Well, it helps their, their temperature regulation. I'm not sure, you know, the pediatrician could answer that question better. Okay. But the, the babies have been listening to mother's heart for months, you know, mm-hmm. and they're really close and they can they can sense that heart rate. So there's something, you know... We, we all know what it's like to, to you know, you have somebody with you that you care about, that cares about you, and, you and you know, they put their arm around you or something. There's something in physical touch that we can't maybe put into words, but we know exists. I'm sure that contributes to this, uh, too. That makes sense. And it probably helps the mom and dad, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. the bonding. Mm-hmm. Are there any negatives for the mom who is breastfeeding other than inconvenience? Are there any... Physical? Well, just no. There are no okay. physical, no physical okay. problems. Uh, it, the only problem is for those few women that really struggle. You know, we really we want to push breastfeeding because the uh, it's too easy for people to uh, to give up and quit. So there's gr- much greater need for us to uh, push it and encourage it. But th- but if women that already want to breastfeed keep hearing just the pushing and the encouragement, and they're really facing some challenges, mm-hmm. you know, like Melanie like Melanie faced, then they need to be given permission mm-hmm. to say no, it's really okay, because we're just pushing it as a public health thing in general. It's it's better. So I was in uh, Pakistan quite a few years ago, more than twenty years ago, and I was amazed to see in these little shops all of these posters hanging up all over the place for formula. I thought, what in the world? Here we are in a third world country, and breastfeeding is a whole lot cheaper than formula too. You know, breastfeeding's better, and yet they're really, they're, the formula companies were pushing this in the third world, and it was becoming, you know, they thought, oh, Westerners do this. This is cool. Oh. There was one doctor, mm. I worked with a family doctor, and she would say to her patients, uh, she would say, well, is your baby a buffalo's baby? Is your baby a cow's baby? No. Is your baby a goat's baby? No. Well, your baby, it, your baby's your baby, right? Your baby needs your milk, needs human milk, not cow's milk, not buffalo milk, not goat milk. Your baby needs human milk, your milk. <laughs> I thought that's a really good way of explaining it because uh-huh. the fats, the proteins, yeah. all the composition is good. Mm-hmm. It even does vary with gestational age mm-hmm. and, and oh. best benefit for the maturity of the baby's intestinal tract. Now, obviously, 
for preemies, you mm-hmm. can't necessarily get preemie milk all the time, donor mm-hmm. milk, but donor milk is still better than formula for the preemies. But preemie uh, mothers who give birth prematurely, the composition, the fat, protein quantities, that sort of thing, are are more ideally matched to that premature baby's immature gut as well. Mm-hmm. So it's fascinating. That is so interesting. So in wrapping up this third episode on breastfeeding, Dr. Sue, what is the one message that you want every woman to hear today about breastfeeding? What would that be? I would say for the woman, but also for everybody else surrounding her, mm-hmm. make it possible for her to breastfeed. You know, give her the space at work that's private and quiet. Uh, you know, may, make it possible, whether she works, whether she's at home, whether she's in public, make it possible for, for women to comfortably breastfeed. And, uh, and if you're a woman who wants to breastfeed, you know, ask for it. Ask for those things that are going to enable you to breastfeed more comfortably. Don't don't feel like you're imposing. It's the best for you. It's the best for your baby. And it should be completely supported. That is awesome. And I so, you know, all three discussions that we've had on breastfeeding, I think we can kind of narrow it down to supporting each other helping you know wrapping your arms around fellow sisters and yes. encouraging them yes. uh, to do the you know whatever is the right thing for them to do and so i i think this is a good wrap up of our three episodes on breastfeeding so thank you dr rutherford for that now i want to invite you to find out more about 3w by going to our website at 3wmedical.org that's the number three the letter w and the word medical Org. Also, you can join the 3W community by donating to the cause of assuring that every woman in Seattle has access to a free medical clinic that does not make money from the choices she makes. So until next time, stay healthy and be well. <laughs>